bringing us safely to this campus. We will be together for four days, and we also pray for those who are still heading to this place, and we are thankful for the leadership and steering committee and all the people who made this event possible. And, of course, the students who are here, their life will be transformed, and they are open to listen to your words, oh God, and they are willing to listen to your call, oh God. So uh, help us to open our hearts and minds and our spirit so that we can listen to you. And now I'm going to pray in Japanese. I lift up spoken and unspoken prayers in your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I wanted to ask how long it took for you to get here because we wanted to be here. That's why we are here. And it doesn't matter how long it took for you to get here. You know, the important thing is you are here. You are here for a reason. You are here for a special weekend. You are here for the transformational weekend. God chose you to be here, and you said yes to be here. I know you are busy. I know you are busy. If you are in school, or even you are done, um, all the work and all the things, I know you are busy, but you chose to be here. You said yes already to God to be here. As I said, this is my homecoming, and I'm so excited to be here. Because, you know, this is the United Methodist, Student, United Methodist Student Movement Student Forum. And for me, that was the beginning of everything. First United Methodist Student Movement Student Forum, I was so new. I think it was only a month since I was baptized. Because I was baptized by a campus minister in Toledo, Ohio. And I was so new, but I was so excited. And that was the beginning of all the things led to me this day. You know, the scripture talks about light. One of the reasons I became Christian was looking at people of my campus ministry at the time, I saw something different. It's like a light shining through them, something different about them that I was curious, what is it? Something is different. Can people see your light? Can people see your light you are carrying? I felt like I was in darkness. I felt, what, I felt no one was around me, no one loved me, no one cared about me. But there are some people who cared about me, who showed me light. But more than anything, Jesus came to my heart. Light up my heart. And I said, yes, Jesus, I want to be your disciples. And I want to share your life, your light. I love Jesus so much. Sometimes I just go like this because I love Jesus so much. And I'm not asking you to do the same because I know some people think <laughs> it's a little crazy. But we can share the light. Jesus shares with us. So the student forum back then, and I was new, and I didn't know what to do, but then I felt God's calling me to run to be part of a steering committee. And I didn't want to do it, but you know the nudge? You probably felt the nudge. You don't want to do it, but you feel like God is kind of nudging you. So I did. And don't know why, but I was elected. And then the following year, I came back as a, for the student forum, and I met so many wonderful pastors and so many people. And it was at the student forum I felt calling for ministry, ordained ministry. It was a student forum. I made lifelong friends. You know, even today, David gave me a ride from the airport. Guess the first person I saw on campus, my good friend Leon whom we served on the steering committee.
committee. Well, we, we're not going to say how many years. <laughs> but we, we spent time and we made lifetime friends together. Today is a new beginning. If you read the chapter of the passage for today, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, today is new beginning. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. Do you know today is a new beginning for you? For you? All of you? Today is a new day. Anything is possible because of Jesus' light and the light we are going to share. So, okay, I'm going to ask another question. Would you stand if you hold any kind of leadership position in your campus ministry or church or community or school or any, any leadership positions? Okay, any leadership positions? Yeah, that's why you are here, I think. Okay, well, thank you. So, okay, you may be seated. That's, that's good. That's good. Many of you are doing a leadership position. <laughs> okay, so have you been frustrated because you've been a leader of whatever organization or whatever group you are, have been? You probably have been frustrated one time or another because you try to communicate with other people and other people don't listen or they started to fight among each other. Hope your group is perfect. That never happened. Well, <laughs> I don't know the reality of your group. But that's when, you know, Paul, Apostle Paul wrote the letter. This is the second letter, well, second Corinthians. But actually, scholars believe this is his fourth letter. So he was in the city of Corinth and trying to do the ministry, and he left, and he heard many, many things happen. So he came back, and he left, and a lot of things happened. So those of you who are leaders, you know how that feels. You're trying really hard, but it's just people are not getting it, not, not going anywhere. And that's the frustration Apostle Paul was trying to communicate with people in the uh, city of Corinth. But you know, well, even when we get frustrated, well, when people are fighting, his message is, life is not about you. Life is not about me or you, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your parents, whoever. Life is not about them. But life is about Jesus Christ. Life is about Jesus Christ. And we need to remember that for everything we do, every moment of our life, we need to remember life is not about me or them, but Jesus Christ. So this weekend theme is God is calling, will you answer? Do you feel like God is calling? Have you even stopped and listened? Do you have a friend that, who just talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and you try to say something, but she or he doesn't ever stop and just talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and, and you, just after 30 minutes or so, you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? How can I get out? I, I, like looking at you, you, you are kind of nodding. <laughs> so you know some people. Do, do you pray? Do you pray? Would you raise your hand if you pray in public, private, whatever the setting? Do you pray before a meal, before go to bed? Okay. So do you do the same thing? Do you do talk, 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 talk? God, I want this, I want that. I'm going through this and da, 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 da. Amen. <laughs> do you do that? You just say all the things you want and all the things you're going through and Jesus, help me. But then you don't listen like the friend you have. You just talk and talk and talk, but you don't listen. So God may be calling, but you may not be listening. So do you feel like God is calling? What is God calling you to do? Sometimes calling comes in different forms you know, through prayer, through scripture, through people, through things happened around you. 
And calling is not always a wonderful thing, unfortunately. I have to say that because it takes courage. Many of the bib biblical characters, they said no to God's calling because it's scary. It challenges you. It changes your life. Perhaps your friends may not agree with you. Your family may, may not agree with you. God's calling may be scary. But Jesus is with you. That's the thing. Jesus is with you when you answer God's calling, when you say yes. God's calling can be small, such as just saying hi, my name is, and introduce yourself so you can start your friendship together. Or sitting with people in the cafeteria, I'm sure you know some people already, and this weekend maybe you want to try to sit with other people. Or just simply be nice to people. Or if you know a group at school that you just don't agree with, sometimes you need to have the courage to say no. Many different types of calling. But also, calling can be say yes to go on a mission trip. Say yes to take the leadership position. Say yes to do something in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you said yes? The light, because Jesus showed us light in darkness. Jesus loves you so much, so much, every one of you. Jesus showed the light for you. Suddenly, you are not in darkness anymore. But now, your turn, your turn to share your light to others. Chris mentioned about uh, my mission trip to Japan. And you remember two months ago, a big earthquake happened, and a tsunami swiped a lot of villages, and now fear of radiation. And I just felt, maybe there's something I can do. Did I want to do that? No. The national office, United Methodist office, was telling me not to go. 